Is their fix enough? Kia and Hyundai are feeling the heat after a TikTok video exposed how easy it is to steal their cars without a key. Now the videos went viral and stealing these cars became a big trend for joyriding and also using the cars to commit other crimes. The city of Seattle is the first city to sue those automakers and hold them accountable. And since then, Kia and Hyundai have been started giving out steer steering wheel locks and software upgrades to stop all that stealing. But is that enough? We asked Seattle City Attorney Ann Davidson about that lawsuit earlier today in the Kyra 7 Live studio. But to me, what's really important is what they did was they chose to cut corners and they left out the anti-theft technology and their least expensive models of those years that they made these. Mm. They, put the, they put it in their, more ex, their expensive mm. models, but they excluded it from the least expensive models. Uh, and now in all the models in 2022 going on, they've included it in all models. So to me, what is important is to understand that those are cars that are knowingly now more susceptible to theft and are left out on the roadways. So that is the problem is because they, they, are known, they know that. Mm -hmm. They're more susceptible to theft because they chose to cut those corners and not put that technology that is basically universal in all other automobiles in those least expensive models. Uh, so it's it's something that is creating a public safety nuisance, in my opinion, and it needs to be rectified. And to, to me, the right way to do it is to do a recall of those cars, put that in, and, and make them right for those car owners and for our roads so we have our safety back at our roads. So the software fix that they've released in the steering wheel locks, that's not enough? Well, to me, the, the, the club, they're using law enforcement agencies to distribute mm -hmm. it. That gets me a little uncomfortable. They don't, mm. We have a shortage of police officers mm. right. in Seattle. I don't need them to be uh, manufacturers, distributors along the way. The right thing to do is to recall those vehicles, make sure we can uh, restore public safety with this aspect because they, they are vehicles that are more susceptible to theft. And they are being used in the commission of other crimes and they are being used for joy rides and they are left in the city of Seattle. Uh, and it's problematic. We need to be strategic in how we can improve public safety. This is one of those ways. To that end, how do you even start to comprehend the actual monetary mm -hmm. damages? Oh, we're talking law enforcement hours. We're talking a distraction from other major crimes, criminal damage to property, all kinds of other things, right? That's a lot of money, no? I think it should be, and it should be clear that it's separate from the criminal actor, right? Mm -hmm. This, they are, they will be, they should be, in my opinion also, personally responsible. They should need to be held accountable for the crimes mm -hmm they commit. This is not instead of, mm -hmm. this is in addition to. Uh, and so to me, they have, again, chosen to cut those corners, knowingly putting those automobiles out on our roads, that they are more susceptible to, to being stolen, easily stolen, uh, and they have left them there. Sorry, one more question just to clarify on this. So if they, if they put in preventative measures, is that enough or do they also need to pay for some of these crimes, some of these losses that have already occurred? I think that we have damages and that's what mm -hmm. we are seeking, but I, I also think that the recall is really important. They need to take those cars, and my, what I understand is it's one, a one-day process, $500 mm -hmm. a vehicle and they can put that anti-theft technology in and then make those not so susceptible to theft for individuals. I was on a ride along with officers months ago and this was one of the vehicles that was recovered mm -hmm. and when they went to make contact with the owner it was a, a hearing impaired person and so it was difficult to communicate. This, this is real life for people uh, and so to know that these are out there uh, it is it's I think imprudent it's prudent upon them to to do what they can which is to do that recall and put that technology in. We have about a minute left. We've got to get to this. It's very topical. For the last two years, we know the Blake decision essentially made drug possession, fentanyl, cocaine, all the illicit drugs uh, difficult for you to prosecute because an officer has got to get to them and offer drug treatment at least twice before you're able to prosecute. Right now, Senate passed a bill to make drug possession a gross misdemeanor and give your judicial system some flexibility to offer offenders treatment and or jail. What are you cheering for to happen that you will be able to make a difference in the streets of Seattle? First and foremost, I want a real sense of urgency about our drug crisis. Uh, and I, that to me is important and it's why I think this legislation is, is good that we have it going forward. Uh, we have to really come to terms with the fact that we are faced with uh, addiction. It is uh, insidious and it reaches everywhere uh, and people are dying. Uh, and I hear from people that say, 
I wish that someone had cared enough about me to help me stop. Mm -hmm. And that included sometimes arrest and in, in, in custody time. Uh, and so t if you are going to accept services and get into treatment, and that's great, then that's what we need to pursue. And if you're not, there needs to be consequences for that because we have to take this seriously. We cannot leave people there and also suscept have people susceptible to uh, more crime. We have repeat victims and sometimes uh, it is around this, the homeless encampments that all of this is there with vulnerable people there uh, and addiction is something that is uh, so serious and we are losing people particularly with fentanyl and meth being so toxic to the human brain we need to let people uh, have a time where they can come into treatment. It's a crisis, no doubt, and we all have to face it. We thank you so much for your time, for Thanks, being yeah. here. And if you at home want to watch this interview again and also see more in-depth conversations on our website, go to cairo7.com slash live studio.